So for the built-in, this is the last, uh, the last part of the series, and that's going to bring you up to where I am now, which is putting primer on this. I might not get finished paint on this and be able to fit it into this part, but the finishing paint's going to be white. So essentially, it's going to be the same process, just switching from primer to to the finished uh, white color. Um, for this one, I usually don't get a lot of footage of the actual install. I don't like filming in people's homes and these built-ins I do. I transport all of this myself. I install it all myself. So it is usually two to three days of carrying heavy things, transferring, transferring stuff over to people's houses and adding filming on top of that is, can, is usually, um, just too much of a pain i've never really done it but for this one i'm going to try and get some footage so there's there might be a fifth part to this um there's no guarantees on that and um i don't know when this is being installed because i haven't worked out a timeline with the customer yet so even if i do get a fifth part to the series of the install um it might not happen next week there might be a break in the series and then i'll have to come back to it but essentially um, you'll see in this it was it's tying up a lot of loose ends There's going to be a lot of fitting in place for this one in particular a lot of the side panels and going around the vent Is all going to be fitted on site, which is one of the reasons I, I do want to film this particular built-in So I put everything back in place and it lines up right with my marks I didn't know if I made this clear throughout the video, but on both ends you could see I made the styles a little over a quarter inch wider than they need to be so I could scribe the edges of this in place. So this whole thing is a, is a little bit wider than it should have to be just so you get a nice edge where it meets the wall. This is the opening for the vent and then the height of this is a little bit over 68 um, from the from the wooden wooden plank up to the ceiling 71. So I have about 10 inches plus a little bit that one and three quarter which is what I go over so it's 10 inches from the top of that panel and then I'm one and three quarter from the ceiling so that panel I can cut um, could be a little less than I wanted a little less than that so I'm cutting it at 11 and three quarters now this whole room is a little over 13 feet long so I'm gonna have to do splice two panels together so I'm cutting both of these two 11 and three quarters it's just the same thing, three quarter inch birch veneer ply. It's gonna be a little shy of the ceiling by about an inch because I'm putting crown up top, so I'm giving myself plenty of play. Uh, the ceiling is one of the places where you'll usually encounter changes in dimension. So you wanna give yourself some play up top. And then as you can see, I'm a little over 13 feet because the room is 157 and a half. So I'm going to cut this right now at 158. I'm going to have to, all these panels are going to be trimmed down in the space, but I'd rather leave them long just in case that I mistook, mistook a measurement or something in, in the house and cut them short. So this panel is going to be a little bit long. It's going to be detachable. To attach them, I'm going to be cutting, cutting um, a groove in both of them and then putting another spline in the middle. So I have a slot cutting bit in my router set it to the right depth which is about halfway down the piece and I could gradually cut that slot this is not a high-end bit which is why when you see me using it in this video I go pretty slow and do multiple short passes because if not it will start to burn but I cut two slots in either piece and this bit right here is 5 16 so I had a little piece of poplar laying around um, and I just trimmed it down to 5 16 and that will act as my spline so you can see how that fits in there. I marked it, cut it down on the radial arm saw, and then I could just put push these two pieces together. In the space, I could patch this with a little bit of patch, and this seam should be pretty seamless. I could glue that spine, spline in place. It would be a pretty strong joint. Now on the back, I did add some cleats just for uh, durability. If you try to lift it up without the cleats on the back, it will come apart. So especially for moving it around, and I'll probably keep these on when I put it in the space, those cleats are just kind of for added stability before that spline's glued. And I can kind of get this above and then into place on top of those two bookshelves. So I was really happy with how this fit. Um, they lined up perfectly. 
Um, all of my styles were right. There were no big gaps and it went right across the top of the shelves. You could see some light shining through on that one, but that was just because it was out of place at the at that moment. You can see it's going to it lines up just about perfectly. My styles were a little long. I trimmed them down before I glued all this stuff together and that fixed that problem. So then gluing these together, um, I take my time with this process because these have to be pretty square, um, obviously for the top panel to line up, but also for the consecutive panels that were going to go on the edges. If my styles on the sides aren't 90 degrees coming off the face of the cabinet, any panels I try and put next to it will also not match up. And um, obviously getting these glued up will help with putting the, the rails on the shelves as well. So this first one I went through and you can see I'm using kind of a burner panel at the top to make sure I get the height right because um, that's where I want it to sit. I just put clamps on it to make sure that the whole thing stays in place and is pretty sturdy. But I'm, that's the burner panel I'm using in place of that long panel that goes on top to make sure everything's in the right spot. Now for this far edge, the, the wider far edge on both of these bookcases, because I glue them up about the same way, these are, are going to be um, detachable. It's going to be easier to scribe this in the space and then trim down whatever needs to be trimmed with a planer or a saw um, when it's not attached to the bookcase, especially the bigger one. I can lift it, but it is quite heavy, so I don't want to take it up and down a million times. So you can see I glued it into the style, then I removed the excess glue and I just put it back in place. I didn't glue it to the cabinet. So that's how I keep those two detachable. When I get to the space and I scribe it to the room, I can then glue it in, in place, add a few brads, patch them real quick, and then it's a seamless, a seamless panel. With that in place, I could then go through and add all of my rails going across the bookcase. Once again, I'm not going to be gluing the edge of the rails to that removable style, otherwise it won't be able to come apart. But it's just a matter of putting some glue on there, hammering everything into place, because these are a nice tight fit, which is what I wanted. And then I will sink some brads into these as well. Since this is going to be painted, putting hardware like this in there is pretty easy because all I have to do is, is put some putty on there and you'll never even be able to tell that there was anything there. So while I had that big bookcase off, I went through and I put a groove on the rustic, what is going to be the rustic panel um, underneath the bookshelf and on top of the shelves. This is now a quarter inch bit because I do, the plywood I bought for this is quarter inch ply, it's almost perfect. So I could use that quarter inch bit and then use the plywood I have for splines. The stuff I used before was a little bit thinner. So I'm just putting a spline in, in the front edge of this because there's going to be a piece attached to it. So it will look like one consecutive, consecutive piece. I clamped everything back into place. Now I'm going to start making, I, I switch gears, I'm going to start making the panel covers for all of this stuff. These are all going to be about 12 inches wide, which is wider than they need to be. Once again, it's going to be something I fit into place at the space and then cut down. So the first thing I'm going to do is exactly what I did on the bottom. I'm going to put a little cleat on the back side of that one um, style so I have something to glue that panel to. So you can see I'm just clamping it into place, I'm just sink some screws in there, and then that's the cleat I'll have for the panel. It will also make any sort of referencing I have of that plywood off the face in line with the poplar. And then I can glue to that as well as put a few brads into it without having to worry about screws or anything. That will be a nice solid joint in the corner. So you can see that's the extra material is what I'm marking. That's what I left for scribing. And then this is just showing where the vent's going to come to. So it's going to go, should go right behind the style. I left some room for myself. And then with the width of the vent, it should come to about where this secondary mark is. So it's 14 and 5 eighths. The panel I cut was 15. Like I said, all of this stuff's going to be long because when you put this in the room, it's going to be a little different. I can have the panels on hand in the space try and install most of this on the first day, make all of the marks on my panels, cut everything on my table saw in the shop the following morning so I get nice clean cuts and then reinstall that stuff in the space. So this one, I did cut this one to height because the height shouldn't change. Famous last words, it, it shouldn't change, it could, 
but um, the height from the rustic panel to the top of that piece shouldn't, shouldn't change. So I cut this to height. And then I'm just clamping all this stuff in place. Like I said, I'm going to be attaching this stuff permanently in the space. Now there was a little bit of gap between the edge of this. I put a square on there and my one bookshelf isn't sitting square. I've had this in the shop for quite a while. So I think my, my, what I'm building off of wasn't flat and it's not. I used a square to prove that and with a level double prove it and the gap, um, in the level to make it square is similar to the one on the side. So if I put the, push the bookcase up, it, it matched there. So that's why that looks so off, but it won't be off in, in real life. So then once again, the panel on the other edge, I'm leaving it long. I might cut those down in the space I haven't decided. And I'm also leaving them wide. All of these are gonna be about 12 inches wide, which should be more than enough but this one's gonna go against and cover that, that edge and this will meet the window. And then there's another panel that covers the back side of this. I'll put splines in this as well, but I'm not doing that until the front panel's cut down to size. So that front panel is probably gonna be about three quarters of an inch too long. I'll rip it down to size and then put a spline on the back side of that and the front side of the other one and that's how all of that will meet. You can see once I fix that bookshelf, my gap pretty much disappeared. And that's how that vent cover is going to look. The edge I could cover with um, edge banding to hide the ply. It's a very simple design. They didn't want a bunch of bells and whistles um, to cover to cover those pieces. Once again, this is still just cutting sheet goods down to about 63 inches by, by 12 inches. And then this will be the one that's going to cover the bottom side of the panel. But once again, I will not be installing that till I'm in the space. So this one I'm cutting... Um, spacers because that that one style is wider than it needs to be so I'm cutting I think these were ended up being about nine sixteenths of an inch the spacers go on the inside and then that that panel that that uh, panel goes on the outside the nine sixteenths brings it perfect to the edge with the the poplar and then you can see it'll be a nice square edge to finish up the rustic rustic um, wood on the bottom. I'm making that about 13 and a quarter. So it should overhang my cabinets just enough. And right now I'm about 12 and a half. So I'm adding three quarters of an inch to the edge of that rustic panel. This is solid uh, yellow pine is that panel that's going to be stained. The staining didn't make it into this video, but I should get finished videos of this. So from that original yellow pine, I'm just ripping a three. I did a little over three quarters. It is seven, eight, seven eighths inch strip. I needed two of them because this is only a 10 foot board. And then I put the exact same groove in there. At this point, I have this, this uh, slot cut bit in there and I'm not changing the depth of it. So it's cutting the same. As long as I'm referencing off the same side, it's gonna cut the exact same thing. And then from that quarter inch plywood I had laying around the shop, this is the inset ply I used on the doors. I had enough left over. I could use spline, make slime, spline material out of it. So I cut a couple pieces of that because I'm going to be doing a bunch of splines uh, to attach all this other stuff. So you can put the spline in the screw groove I already had on that rustic piece of wood, which is newer wood, but um, barn wood nowadays is really expensive. So just staining it will, will make it give it the look that we're looking for. And then I could attach that edge. So now the edge looks seamless and it looks like one continuous piece can see how nice that that matches and then obviously the vent will cover cover the gap in there and that's what it looks like all the way down I really didn't have any gaps in that whatsoever and then obviously for the edge like I said because this is longer than the material I had I had to cut a little piece to cover that one edge now for this this whole thing might get moved forward or back a little bit so just in case I did cut another piece that could go on the inside of this if the vent doesn't go all the way forward or back so I'll have a piece to cover the vent so then I put the top piece back on you could see where 71 comes to I'm about an inch shy of the ceiling and then I can mark where the crown molding is going to meet on this the crown I bought will come down three inches 
So I just set my the gauge on my, my, my square and then I could run it down the whole panel. You can see it hits all my marks. So that's just the line to show me where the crown will come to and that's how I could start deciding where I'm going to mount the outlet boxes for all the lights that are going to go up top here. Now this is that was the decision I was waiting on the customer for because we were I originally broke the whole piece up so that it was um, the same distance but then the lights weren't centered over the bookcases and it could look a little weird so I sh while I was waiting for him to reply I went through and I started sanding all the panels for the doors and everything I sanded all this to 80 grit I like to sand in between coats of paint so I don't get crazy with this I sand to 80 grit remove all the gr glue residue on everything and then it's ready for primer take all the hardware off all of that so this is just kind of laying out the lights. You can see the two edge lights, I drew a little diagram so it made sense, are centered over the two bookcases. Then I took the distance in between those two lights, I split the difference in order to mount the other two. So I'm dividing it by three because with two lights you're going to have three equal quadrants left over. So I divide that leftover number by three and that gave me 38.5. So from the lights, it's 38.5, make a mark, 38.5, make another mark, and then it should be 38.5 to the last light. And that's how we, we laid out the four lights on the top. I got these boxes with, they're almost like toggle bolts. They're made for, designed for ceilings, but since this doesn't have any studs to attach boxes to, that's what I got. And then like I said, that's one inch for the crown. And then all I did was just draw, because this is about a little over four inches uh, to fit the boxes, I just drew some circles with my compass, and then I could cut those out, and that's where all of the holes were going to be. I drilled a pilot hole so I could get the jigsaw in there, and then I just cut out this plywood, put the boxes in. Fortunately, I wanted to do the wiring, but it would have been stupid to do the wiring before paint, because all of it would have had to come back out. so pretty easy the flange on the boxes is going to cover any sort of bad jigsaw job you might get out of here this jigsaw doesn't cut perfectly straight but straight enough to to do this job and then the the boxes just slide right in now i'm going to pull the fins out but um these you don't have to be able to reach the back side of this there's like a lock on the screw mechanism so as you start screwing from the top just like a toggle bolt, it starts pulling it towards you and then it locks that whole thing into place. So then for the top side of this panel, since I have the splines there, I'm going to be putting splines on the back side of the ply. These are wide enough that that span might sag over time, which is why I did it, but it's also just another glue point for that top facade. So these were a little bit skinnier because I was using skinnier plywood at the time, so I decided to switch this out with the, the quarter inch bit, so I just went over there with the quarter inch bit. I widened the spline and then I made marks on the back side of my plywood panel. Didn't change the height or anything of the bit. I referenced it off the bottom edge, just like I referenced off the bottom edge on the cabinet. And then I could cut that, that groove there. And then these will also have splines to attach this to. So this is that quarter inch material. I can just trim it with aviator snips real quick pop it into place and then you can see those splines will fit on top of my bookcase. This was a real nice fit. It lined up perfectly. I was pretty happy with how this turned out and it just makes the whole thing that much sturdier. So it's just hammering it into place on the one end and then coming on this end. And you can see now that gap in the, the top of the bookshelf is gone that because the light's gone. And then once this is in place, cut and cut and cuts the size and in place, this underside will get edge banding to cover the plywood. So I decided these splines are really easy to do, once, especially the router bit, I don't change it. So I had it set up and I decided to attach this one with the spline as well. If all goes well, all of this stuff won't need hardware, which will be super nice. I won't have to fill in the gaps. Just put a spline, a, uh, use that slot cutting bit for the inside edge of that style which will also sure up that style and then the same thing I referenced it off the front side of my panel I cut a slot and then this one will also have a spline this one will have to be trimmed down obviously depending on where that bookcase is where that bookcase lies all of these are about three quarters of an inch wider than they're most likely going to be 
so which is why nothing's being permanently attached. You can see once that's in place, um, that facade panel covers that real nice. So then to finish up um, the rustic edge, he wanted a bullnose on there, which is basically a roundover on both sides. So I don't really have a roundover bit, so I just used the bit I had with a, a, a curve on it. I raised it up enough to cut a curve on this. Be easier to flip the molding instead of flip the whole piece. So I detached the molding, flipped it over, and then cut the exact same curve on the bottom to give me uh, a bull nose for this. Pretty simple. You could see I was doing multiple stuff at a time, just all these sort of finishing tasks to get all this ready for paint. And then for painting, like I said, I, I slightly sanded everything with 80 grit sandpaper. I'm going to put two coats of primer on this. This is um, Zinsser primer. You can get it at Lowe's. Because you have to water it down to go through the spray gun, I do do two coats. Um, in between each coat, I did put a little bit of putty and caulk. You can do that in the beginning, but with the timing of this in winter, the paint dries a little bit slower. So I decided to put a coat of primer on. The primer usually makes the imperfections pop because the imperfections are now, you know, dark lines and dark cracks. So it's easier to see, but I do like to put some putty. I'm a pretty putty heavy person. I like to hide everything, even if it's just a little imperfection. So just put a little bit of putty. This is a, a nicer grade of joint compound. It's called MH Patch. And once it starts to dry, you can see it's just, just little, little spots covering up brad holes and everything. This stuff is easy to sand and then I would sand in between coats. The caulking, I also put caulking on all of the seams of the bookcase. This is arguably overkill, but in my shop, especially in the winter, even though this is plywood, the stuff is gonna shift a little bit when I move it to the space, so this just helps avoid any sort of cracking that might occur. It's easy enough to do. I always have caulk laying around the shop, so I do like to caulk all those seams. And then that's gonna be the end of this. I do put another coat of paint on this, and like I said, I'm gonna try and get some in the space. But showing the paint at this point was kind of pointless because it's just going to be white paint, multiple coats of white paint, two coats of primer, one or two coats of finish, and then it can be installed.